What is going on guys and welcome to Rook's Gaming Corner, a gamer's best friend. Ever wonder what would happen if you threw Tolkien's Lord of the Rings books into a blender with the Batman Arkham series and the Assassin's Creed games? Well, Monolith Productions, creator of the Fear and Condemned games did, and the result is one of the better action roleplay games to come out in a long time. This is Middle-Earth, Shadow of Mordor. The story follows Talion, a ranger of Gondor stationed at the Black Gate of Mordor. After the opening events that set up the game's narrative, Talion finds himself cursed, trapped between the lands of the living and the dead, his body joined with a mysterious wraith that gives him extraordinary powers, such as allowing him to cheat death, fall from incredible heights without taking a scratch, and dominating the minds of the Uruks, bending them to his will. And it's up to the two of them to face off against the evil forces of the Black Hand to break his curse, all the while uncovering secrets about the Wraith's past and cutting down legions of Uruks that stand in their way. The story is great, ripe with mystery and intrigue that even people who know nothing about the Lord of the Rings universe can enjoy. And thankfully, people wanting to brush up on their lore can check out a helpful in-game appendix that gives information on the characters, key settings, and other information concerning the Lord of the Rings universe. It's just a shame that the game, with such a great story, has a lot of main missions that aren't very interesting or memorable. Most of them have you doing the same exact things every time. Go here and kill X amount of Uruks either stealthily or with your bow. A bit of variation would have been welcome. There are good ones, my personal favorite being the Graug hunting missions, where you team up with a badass dwarf and take down the giant Graug. That in the missions involving fan favorite Golem. Yes, Colum makes a cameo for a few missions to uncover the identity of the wraith sharing your body, and he is just as creepy as ever. It's the Black Master, the Royal One. Small and sweet, like what being this is. But then the Trixie Ranger comes along. Craggy Ranger, small and stinky Ranger. He hurts us. He steals from us what bargains is. Bargains is. The major bulk of the game stems from defeating this large army of Uruks, all of which who have an in-game chain of command that they adhere to. Finding a way to draw out the Uruk Warchief and kill them is left completely up to the player, and there are a number of different ways that you can go about doing it. Sure, you can rush them head-on, but that's a great way to get overwhelmed and killed. It's way more rewarding to utilize other creative methods, such as branding two of their captains beforehand, making them your sleeper agents, and then turning them against the Warchief when you finally confront him, giving you a significant advantage. Or you can infiltrate a Auric Feast, poison the grog they drink, and watch as they attack each other and do your work for you. I never grew tired of searching for more creative alternatives to the regular hack and slash approach. That's not to say that the head-on approach is any less entertaining though, because combat in Shadow of Mordor makes you feel like a complete and utter badass. I never grew tired of watching Talion cut down wave after wave of Uruks, utilizing his various upgradable combat techniques and beheading them like they were made of tissue paper. I've heard that the game be described as Arkham City combat with decapitations, and yeah, that's really the best way to describe it. The key to staying alive stems from the player's ability to maintain flow in the combat, racking up a decent combo, knowing when to counter, knowing the best time to use your bow, and knowing how and when to take out the various types of orcs. Some need to be stunned before you attack them, other carry shields, so it's much more than just hacking away with your sword. So yeah, exactly like the Batman games. But I bet you'll never see Batman do this. Talion isn't invincible though, and while you can dispatch a few dozen Uruks with relative ease, it's very easy to get overwhelmed, and death is always a constant threat. But when you do inevitably die, there's always a consequence that comes attached with it. More often than not, the Uruk that killed you will be promoted to a captain, and the Uruk army grows stronger. Each of these Uruks have a personality, and will remember you if you let them escape, or you meet up with them again after they kill you. It's a small touch, but it's a much appreciated one, as it adds a level of character to the enemies that you just don't see in other games. Shall I say goodbye? When you fall and die? After I pluck out your eye! And speaking of character, I have to point out the fantastic collectible Shadow of Mortar offers. Each collectible has a story attached to it in the form of a memory that you can listen to. I found myself actively searching these out as the stories they tell not only add lore to the game, but offer insight into the goings-on of some of the characters and events that transpire. These are how you do collectibles, as they not only offer rewards in terms of experience points, but also make you feel like a part of the universe. These experience points can be used to level up Talion's health, focus, number of arrows he can shoot, as well as the number of runes his sword, bow, and dagger can hold. There's also a large number of perks he can choose from when he levels up, all of which are extremely helpful. 
Some perks allow for easier executions on enemies, others make it easier to get around in the game world, so you're always using the perks you've unlocked, giving them a great sense of value. And that's really the name of the game, value. After completing the main missions and finishing the rest of the game's side content, the total number of hours played came to around 21 hours, and that was packed with different hunting missions, gathering different herbs and plants, and participating in challenges that make your weapons stronger. Actually, with a game so rich in content, it's a shame that the ending leaves so much to be desired. Don't get me wrong, the story closes out fine and well, but the ending boss battle is so weak. I'm not even kidding when I tell you it is literally a three-button quick-time event, and then BAM! Game over. Players want more than that, so if you build the big badass villain up, players will want a good climactic fight to finish him off, and Shadow of Mordor fails to deliver on that front. But that's really the only complaint that I have with Shadow of Mordor. Other than some generic main missions and the final boss fight being... Well, there is no final boss fight. Monolith Productions have created a polished Lord of the Rings adventure game, ripe, fun gameplay, and world-building lore that both fans and newcomers to the series can enjoy. And that's why Middle-Earth Shadow of Mordor gets an 8 out of 10. Thank you so much for watching, everybody. I hope you enjoyed the video. Now, what if I were to tell you that there was a way you could express your like for the video, but without the pesky trouble of typing in the YouTube comments section? I'm, of course, talking about the like button. And if you do like this video, I will personally nominate you for coolest person on the internet. And that is a promise. If you really liked the video and want to see more of it, consider clicking the subscribe button. That way you can stay updated on any and all of my videos, such as my last one, the Top 10 Final Fantasy Summons, which you can view by clicking the annotations. I mean, or or not, I mean, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna tell you what to do. You guys are so nice, and I'm, I just don't want to tell you. So you guys have a great day.